As a traveling filmmaker and photographer, you always have one existential question to answer, and that is, what gear should I bring? And let's be honest, I'm pretty bad at making these choices. Now, one remedy is to acquire gear that is compact, light, and still fits the needs of your shoot. But finding your perfect travel kit can be a little bit of a trial and error run. And I usually sell a lot of gear that, I, that doesn't fit my needs. And I do this on gearfocus.com, today's sponsor. But now let's talk about what's in this backpack here. Okay, so while we wait for the sun to set behind Hangi Foss, let's talk about gear. It was a fairly easy hike, 40 minutes, two and a half kilometers uphill, but I decided to bring most of my stuff with me so that we can talk about the gear in front of an amazing backdrop, because why not, right? Quick side note, rockfall is real. Look at this path here, which completely got obliterated by these rocks falling down. So be aware of the signs. Now any good what's in my backpack video starts with the backpack itself and this is the Low Pro Pro Tracker BP550. I got it earlier this year and I'm absolutely in love with it. I really like these two compartments, these two separate bags that you can strap onto the top. When I'm on flights, this top compartment I fill with my chargers, hard drives, snacks, anything I need actually for the flight itself and then I put the rest of the backpack into the top compartment but keep this one at my seat. And you see, I have a water bladder in here that I use especially helpful for hiking. You can you know, like put a tent or a jacket down here. It has a tripod holder. I'm using here the typical Manfrotto B3 aluminum version. It's not ideal for the cameras I use, but I also have a Zachtla Flotec with me back in the car down the valley. But let's put this camera on the tripod for an overhead look. And by the way, this camera is the Canon R6 with the 24-105 that Adorama loaned me for this trip. Uh, so far, so good. It's a good camera to just like film yourself and YouTube videos if you're into that kind of stuff. All right, I changed location a little bit and I realized also that I haven't done a what's in my backpack video in quite a while, so maybe a little bit weird, but let's look inside. So the heart of my production and my A camera for almost a year by now is the Red Komodo 6K. Gives you the awesome Red Code Raw Kodak and Red Image quality in a small form factor. This is the Stormtrooper edition. Anyone who has been a little bit longer subscribed to my channel knows this camera by now. But I'm rocking the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, one of my all time favorite lenses for Super 35 cameras. I use the Canon RF to EF adapter with the breakthrough photography ND filters. And this is a new addition to my package. This monitor by Portkeys, that's the BM5WR. And they sent it to me to try it out. I tried it out before it came out here because you never want to go out with gear that you don't trust. But what I really like about this is that it's significantly brighter than my previous monitor that I've been using. And I think this is like over 2000 nits. This is perfect when you're shooting outdoors all the time. I'm not even running this monitor at full brightness. It's just so insanely bright that it's super easy to use in the outdoors. Also, it has Komodo control. So I can co control my camera through this touch screen with this Wi-Fi antenna here and dial in all the settings here wirelessly. Really cool. And then one of my other favorite lenses is the Tokina 11 to 20 2.9 T2.9. It's been a workhorse for me because I really dig it on the Super 35 sensor, especially when you're out here in nature and get close to these waterfalls. This lens here gives you just a super, super nice wide field of view, which is amazing for nature shots, landscapes. So definitely, although it's a little heavy, always with me, especially when I'm out here hiking in nature. Batteries, I'm using the Anton Bauer Titan Micros. My favorite size is the V90s. And just to close up the Komodo, Exocent now sent me this new, newly red approved memory card, which is a 512 gigabyte. They come also in 256 and also 
I think in the one terabyte versions. It's red approved, tried it now for a couple, like a month or so. Shot a big project on it, no issues, works perfectly. Has a nice little Komodo on in front of it. Yeah, another alternative for memory card for your camera. That's the CFAS 2.0 card, obviously that's what the Komodo is rocking. Eh. Okay. Now let's talk about drones. So this is a controller for a Mavic 2 Pro. I'm actually going to fly it soon, so maybe we just keep it out. Also have a bunch of ND filters. These are the polarized ND filters from Polar Pro for the Mavic 2 Pro. Always helpful, especially out in nature. You also see a GoPro, always good. I use it either as a time-lapse camera, some action camera when I'm mounted to cars or so, or for something else which you see in a second. Now, another addition to my whole package here that I haven't had before, but now lug around because I really dig it and it's so much fun, is the DJI FPV. I know it's not the best FPV drone out there, but for someone who's not like using it just for an FPV as an FPV flyer, but as a cinematic tool to get shots that you usually don't get, I love this thing. Um, here, the drone gets here into the top compartment and then I have the goggles up here in the secondary compartment that you know you also need to carry around. So when you shoot actually with an FPV drone and a Komodo and a DJI Mavic 2, you carry a lot of stuff with you, but eventually, you know, it's worth it. You've seen the videos. Yeah, I'm carrying a bunch of batteries for the drones, for the Komodo I'm with me, but you can also throw in your laptop when I travel. The laptop goes up front here, but that's basically what's in my backpack in 20, 21, is that what it is? Now, packing for this trip made me realize that I need to seriously trim down on the gear I own by like quite a bit. And I started this journey to minimalism by selling gear on Gear Focus, which is a marketplace to buy and sell camera equipment. Not only is it a great place to snatch a good deal, but for me as a gearhead, it is a platform that allows me to give my used gear a second life in the hands of a fellow enthusiast. Recently I sold some fairly niche gear, specific to my red Komodo, to a filmmaker in Oregon and he used the new make an offer feature where an interested buyer can, you guessed it, make an offer below the price that is set by the seller. Gear Focus was made by creators for creators and has the lowest seller fees anywhere of only 3.5% which is less than half of the other marketplaces out there. So either if you have gear to sell or if you want to invest in equipment, I recommend checking out gearfocus.com. It would be great if you can use the link in the description below so that they know that I sent you and while you're there, feel free to check out my store and see what I've listed right now. But with that, let's go back to Iceland. Okay, now there's a few pieces of gear that I don't have with me. We're gonna talk about those right now. All right, another crucial piece of gear that I specifically brought for this location here is the 72200 2.8 because I knew after the fourth time in Iceland, I had to see these little fellas here the little puffins and they exceed my expectations I think they're my new favorite bird now if that's a thing let's talk about audio real quick I'm using the Broad Video Mic Pro Plus on the R6 right now and also have a Tentacle Sync Trek E and a lav mic with me because especially if you want to shoot yourself from further away or in windy conditions a lav mic is indispensable you know how much I love this thing if you watch one of my videos I made about it if you haven't check it out up here and let's not forget the rear view camera that I also have with me uh, which has an amazing dynamic range and resolution especially to shoot sunsets as you can see here wonderful now at the end of a shooting session, I drop all the footage from all the cameras on a Samsung SSD T5 uh, on my 2017 MacBook and start generating proxies while I'm driving. It helps me to edit faster. All the proxies are on one hard drive and uh, the footage is on other hard drives. 
so I can start reviewing faster. And then pardon the mess, this is my gear storage slash charging bay. This is where all the batteries go in with these inverters here. So while I'm driving or resting, I can start charging and recharging all the batteries from all the gear. As you can imagine, it's an endless cycle. Okay, one of the pieces of gear that I brought with me but have not used at all in the first 10 days is the DJ RS2 and that gimbal, which I can use for my Komodo, but I really didn't see use so far. I mean, I get all my dynamic shots from the drones and run the Komodo on sticks and handheld, so lesson learned. Don't need to bring this beast here on a trip, but it's all right. One of the bigger items worth bringing though is the Zachtler Flotec 75 with the Ace Fluid Head. Look how tall this thing goes. Like my camera is above my eye level. So especially if you want to film something like this uh, from top down-ish, this thing is worth gold. You can do super smooth pans and tilts. Definitely worth bringing. And since it's carbon fiber, it's also fairly light. Certainly it's bulky and big. So I had to put it diagonally in my suitcase, but Obviously, I wouldn't take it on a bigger hike as you've seen. All right, I will leave the links to all these products in the description below. Now you know what I'm lugging around here on the top of volcanoes. But thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye. The sun is popping. The sun is popping. Let's switch lenses and cameras.